ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh our dear viewers welcome once again to this special edition of a series the messiah of the age coming to you from our MTA international studios here in Qadian in India in this program we will be discussing about the life the claims and go into deep about the subject matter of the messiah and mahdi of the age who was to come to reform the whole of mankind the person that was to come to represent all the messiahs and all the personalities that were to come in different religions of the world in the latter days. I am your host, Ustaz Abdullah Diba, and today with me in the studio, on my immediate left, is Hafiz Abdul Ghani, who comes all the way from Nigeria, and he's a missionary of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat, Nigeria. So. Next to him is Ustaz Muhammad Mbai, who's old, who is from the Gambia, and he's also a missionary of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat in the Gambia, serving in the MTA International Africa Studios in Ghana. Welcome to the program, gentlemen. Thank you very, Thank much. You very much. In today's program of the Messiah of the Age, we will be discussing about the Holy Quran, the services of the promised Messiah, Hadrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadian, may peace be upon him, of many services that he has rendered to Islam and to other faiths. One of them is his services to the Holy Quran. Gentlemen, when you look at the different services of the Holy Quran, of the promised Messiah, Hadrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadian, alayhi salam, numerous services that he has done to the faith. But today we'll look at the subject matter of the Holy Quran. Baisab, if I could start with you. During the time of Hadrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadian in the 19th century, and even before, Muslims, generally Muslims, accepted this idea or this allegation that was coming from other faiths that the Holy Quran was imperfect, even though the Quran itself gives this claim that it's a perfect book. What answers do we have about this question of the Holy Quran being imperfect? Yes, Diba Sahib, with regard to the imperfection of the Holy Quran, which is said by the other known Muslims, or even some Muslims also believe that some part of the Quran are missing, which are not based on truth. Because the Holy Quran itself has indicated that it is a book which is perfect and there is no doubt in it. And the promised Messiah Islam, proved, without leaving any shadow of doubt, that the Holy Quran, words and letters, its words and letters, are arranged in such a way that there is no way that one can find any kind of mis misconception or misunderstanding in the Holy Quran. Mm -hmm. For example, the promised Messiah talk, talks, uh, spoke about the arrangement of the verses of the Quran. He said they are connected. The verses are so much connected that they are like a body. Mm -hmm. The way the, the bo our body structure is connected, that we support one another. Mm -hmm. That's the way the verses of the Quran support one another. Yeah. And to say that the Quran, some purpose of the Quran is missing, it's like telling me that the Quran is imperfect. Right. And the Quran says that it, ha it provides solution to every moral, spiritual, and social problems. Right. And they have, if Quran can provide solution to this, if you say the Quran, some parts are missing, that means the Quran will be, not be insufficient. Mm -hmm. We lack that potentiality to provide solution to some areas. Right. Rather, we have seen the Quran is providing solution to every spiritual, moral, and social problem. Right. And the promised Messiah Islam, he says, if the Quran, like, like some parts are missing, right. then it does not become, then, it, then the claim that the Quran made, mm -hmm. that it is the most perfect book, right. and it came to, re, to correct the mistakes, mm -hmm that are found in other scriptures, mm -hmm. it will not make this claim. Mm -hmm. It should, should be silence about it. That the, about it. That the Quran make this claim, mm -hmm. made this claim, and it also bring proofs mm -hmm. for that claim. Right. Because the Quran is a book that does not need an outside mm -hmm. 
f like it made a claim and an outside thing come to give those proofs that why the Quran make this this claim. Mm -hmm. The Quran when it brings proofs, mm -hmm. it make a claim, mm -hmm. it brings it on proofs to those claims. Right. So like we're saying. So the proof the, of the Quran is the Quran. It's the Quran itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we have to look at to, to to understand that we have to look at who is responsible for that, right? About the, the, when the Quran is being revealed, we know that it was revealed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam by God Almighty himself, himself. But was that the end of his responsibility? Did he just reveal it to him, and that was it? Officer. Well, um, before I answer that question, mm -hmm. I want to add to what uh, Mbais have said. Right. You see, I remember a book written because we are talking about the services of the Promised Messiah alayhi wa sallam, to the Holy Quran. Mm -hmm. I remember for 15 days. The promised Messiah, Azam Mr. Ghulam Ahmad was mentioned to have gone and debate with the Christians mm -hmm. in Amritsar for good 15 days right. on the stance that Quran, anybody who is an adherent of any religion should come up mm -hmm. with their scripture mm -hmm. and give references in support of whatever their book says from their book. From their own books. So the promised Messiah for a good 15 days was calm and was giving profusely references from the Holy Quran to the Christian and that what gave birth to Jange Mukaddas. Mm -hmm. Now, that is one of the greatest service. Right. Now, it is written that once the first Khalifa was traveling and the Christian now said, ah, I, the debate that uh, your master had with uh, the Christians, I'm a Christian but I don't see any benefit of it. He said, the same first Khalifa said, it was just the statute of the promised Messiah of mode of calmness and it's the way it attends to things that he was able to listen to all bogus statements you people were making. Right. If I were the one, I would have walked away the first day right. because he was quoting from you, from the, from the Holy Quran to support everything or every claim of the Holy Quran. Right. While you are not even, you are unable to give a single reference mm -hmm. to support the statement that Jesus was son of God. So, that was the greatest service ever done by anybody mm -hmm. to Islam mm -hmm. and the Holy Quran. Right. You see, after the revelation of the Holy Quran, right. Allah did not stop there because mm -hmm. revelation is a continual thing. Mm -hmm. So, when the initial revelation came to those Islam, those Islam always hasten up, right. try to recite mm -hmm. after Malaika Jibril mm -hmm. so that you should not forget whatever has come from God. Right. God revealed, no, Muhammad, don't do that. In Surah Al-Qiyamah, mm. that no, don't hasten mm. with your tongue, mm -hmm. so that you should not forget. In Qur'ana, this is the time for revelation mm. of the Holy Quran. Mm. This time, don't worry, we shall take responsibility that nothing will be missing from the Holy Quran. Collecting the, it so, the, in, in the time of Azaz Usman, they collected the Holy Quran, but you will see that. The revelation when the Sallam was doing it, all my Allah says, mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. shall teach you and you will not forget. Mm -hmm. That is the first grace that mm -hmm. Almighty Allah gave to the whole Quran. Mm -hmm. Now, secondly, he said, Inna alayna mm -hmm. wa Qurana. We are the one to compile the Quran. Right. So if Allah compiles something, mm -hmm. uh, it is insane for anybody to say something is missing there. Right. Or is either you do not understand mm -hmm. that nothing is missing, or you just assume that something is missing. Mm -hmm. So the Quran is a perfect book. Not only that, you know, like Mbairi really said earlier, Quran is just not an ordinary book. Mm -hmm. The wedding, mm -hmm. the way they follow one another, mm -hmm. the letters, is a chain. Mm -hmm. The surahs, they are chain that work together one another. Mm -hmm. If not, Almighty Allah claims, like the promised Messiah has proved earlier, more than 100 years, mm -hmm. to a lot of people that why don't you ponder, reflect over the Holy Quran? Mm -hmm. If it had come from any other person mm -hmm. than the Supreme Being, Almighty Allah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they will have found haphazardly placed things in it. Mm, that, that is indeed, the, like Mbais have said, the Holy Quran, you know, explaining itself. You know, the Quran here itself is saying, like Hafiz Abu had rightly quoted, that if it had come from anyone else, other than God Almighty, then you would have found misconceptions in it. So this allegation that Muslims have sadly accepted, you know, which the Holy Promised Messiah himself refuted, 
He's telling us that. Are you trying to say then that the Quran has not come from God? Because God is saying, if it has come from me, then there will be no misconceptions in it. There will be no you know, um, um, misunderstandings in the Holy Quran. Yes, officer. I would also want to add that some people, when they read the Quran and they read stories, mm -hmm. similarly, they read that about Azar Musa alayhi salatu was salam mm -hmm. in a chapter, and they read in another portion, another story of Azar Musa alayhi salatu salam. Mm -hmm. They think that is a repetition. Right. Quran is not a book of repetition. Right. You see, Quran, when it talks of Azar Musa in Baqarah mm -hmm. and talks of him in Surah Al Imran or in Surah Al Nisa, there is a purpose for it. Right. Because there are prophecies about mm -hmm. it. Right. For the Muslims, that what befell the early dispensation mm -hmm. and they sunk into decadence, mm -hmm. you should learn from it. Mm -hmm. Else, you fall the same way and you are gone. You are yes, done with. Yes, perfect. So, we need to understand mm -hmm. that the messages of the Holy Quran is just not mere stories, stories, stories. Mm -hmm. I think, Baisab, I think if you could add, throw some light on this, this misunderstanding that the way the Holy Quran was revealed, right? For example, we know that um, the first revelation was Iqra, Bismillah yeah. al right? But the, this is not the first chapter of the Holy Quran. Yeah. So can you, can you throw some light on that, about the revelation and then the compilation of the Holy Quran? You see, the revelation of the Holy Quran happens in a way whereby the need of time and the need of occasion. Okay. What was needed at that time and what is needed for that occasion, mm -hmm. then a verse will come. Right. So, so the arrangement of the Quran, mm -hmm. it, does, it does not happen exactly as people might be thinking that the way it was revealed. Right. Because if the arrangement happened in that way, then Surah uh, Ikra Bismillah will come first. First, right. But it is based upon the profound wisdom of Allah mm -hmm. that He decides, because Himself said He will arrange the Quran. Yeah. Okay. Normally, as a human being, mm -hmm. we will say Iqra should, should be the first one, eh, first verse of the Quran first or the first surah. Mm -hmm. But in the profound wisdom of God, Iqra is not the, is not the first, first surah. Right. So sometimes, as we know from the um, life history of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, that yes. they would be sitting with the companions and they would ask a certain question. Mm -hmm. And then a revelation would come down, mm -hmm. you know, regarding that subject matter. And then he would tell them to add that to the Holy Quran. But like Hafiz Saba said, you know, some people tend to think that God revealed it, but then he didn't arrange it. But this verse of Surah Al-Qiyamah tells us mm -hmm. that later, even during the Holy Prophet Sallallahu lifetime, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi explains to us that the Holy Prophet himself monitored it, and God Almighty was the one telling him and guiding him about how all those revelations should be put together and into the order that we have the Holy Quran now. Um, another um, misunderstanding or another um, allegation that Muslims have accepted. Now, this was something that was accepted by almost all Muslims. Mm -hmm. But the promised Messiah, when he claimed to be from God Almighty, he stood on firm grounds and, you know, and refuted this subject matter or this, this um, concept of abrogation of some verses of the Holy Quran. Hafizab, if I could come back to you, that some verses of the Holy Quran or some parts of the Holy Quran were applicable at that time, but now they're not valu valuable anymore. They're not valid anymore. What do you have to say? What, do, what did the Promised Messiah teach about that? Well, uh, the Promised Messiah wasalam, mentions in most of his writings mm. that uh, when the scholars fail to reflect deeply and understand the import of any verse of the Holy Quran, mm -hmm. they just close their eyes and say, it's abrogated. What? Whereas, the Promised Messiah wasalam, claimed and said that call any scholar from any sects to come and face me, to show that when the water from heaven does not come down, mm -hmm. the earth cannot spring up and sprout to bring the greenery. I am the water that has came from heaven this time. So let us, I challenge anybody, let us write different verses in a cup and throw in it as many as possible and call all scholars that you know to come and pick and write on any verse of the Holy Quran. I attest to this, and I will tell you that what I will write is the one that will be approved at any time. Right. So the Promised Messiah wasalam, actually told the world that the abrogation that had been put and as hard and said is part of Quran mm -hmm. and some verses are abrogated is lack of reflection, understanding, and closeness to Almighty Allah. Right. Not only that, uh, the example I will give is that some scholars even say that polygyny 
Marrying more than one wife mm -hmm. was meant for a period. Okay. So it's abrog abrog abrogated in this age. Right. The belief on the angels that brings revelation, some scholars said, it has ceased. It does, it's meant for only the time of Holy, Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mm. The promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wa proved profusely from the Holy Quran that no, it's lack of understanding. Mm -hmm. You cannot say that revelation stops because Almighty Allah is the one that speaks. Mm -hmm. And he says, there, and there is no attribute of God mm -hmm. that, is, that remains static at mm -hmm. any time. Mm -hmm. God continued talking. Mm -hmm. So if God continue, continue to talk, it means it will continue to speak with the righteous ones. Mm -hmm. So the promise Messiah also now gave a verse, which is in Surah Al-Hamim Sajda. Mm -hmm. In Allah for those who say that angels will cease descending. Mm. Surah so Hamim Sajjah said, angel will continue descending mm. on the righteous ones. Mm -hmm. And when it is on the day of judgment, they will tell them, mm -hmm. We were the one that used to come and give you the glad tidings. Like we were your friends. <laughs> your friends in, in the, so they had, that, they had that relationship. Yes, my self, you yes. wanted to add something. Abhi Saib said right. that uh, it, the concept of abrogation comes because of or came because of the people don't understand certain verses of the Quran. Right. I will give you an example. The example is in the Holy Quran where Allah said, Faktulu and Fusakum. Kill yourself. Another place in the Quran, Allah said, Do not kill yourself. Mm. When the ulama see this, they say, Oh, that, that other verse contradicted this verse. So, so that one to, is abrogated. We, we, we have to that. forget about this mm. one. This has, some, for example, they also believe that this verse is abrogated. Mm. The promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam said, no, this is one of the most beautiful verse of the Quran. Mm -hmm. That today is a solution to the world problem. Because this verse doesn't mean that you cannot preach your fellow other or, or, or or, or faiths, mm -hmm. other religions. Mm -hmm. It only means you should not infringe mm -hmm. into their religion, mm -hmm. religious affairs. But you can still preach them with wisdom. Mm -hmm. So the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam explained in detail mm -hmm. as to the, the concept of abrogation. Mm -hmm. It's, it's something that does not tally with, you, 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 with, with, with the wisdom of the Holy Quran. Mm -hmm. and, also, and also, when you look at the Quran, very, uh, the, the writings of the Promised Messiah with mm -hmm. regard to the concept of abrogation, right. <clears throat> the Promised Messiah explained mm -hmm. that when scholars read, again, when they read certain things, mm -hmm. and those things is not meant for their time and for their age, mm -hmm. they, they tend to. Mm -hmm. Look at that as if this is impossible. Right. For example, the verse of the Quran which says, when, the cam when the she, she came in, 10 months pregnant is abandoned. As a mode of transport. As a mode right. of transport. Yes. They say, oh, this verse, how is this possible? Right. So because they never knew that in the future something will come. Mm -hmm. Say so this verse is abrogated. Right. It's not so abrogated. that's the way they, they've been calling every verse abrogated, abrogated, abrogated. And then they compile all the, I think they sub About, about 1,200. Versus, versus or even that Muslims, more. that Muslims themselves, you know, put together, put together and read, and read that they all these verses but of the Quran. Thank God, the Prophet has come, yeah. even and he has got rid of this this great misconception, yeah. you know, which is against the the will of yes. God Almighty, against the promise of God Almighty. And what what beautiful thing that he said is that you sh we should accept as human beings, even though the people <coughs> who call themselves scholars, they should accept as human beings and be humble enough to say, well, there are certain verses that are beyond my understanding. But God is the most wise. Mm -hmm. He knows what he means by this verse, and he'll probably reveal it to someone else. That is my lack of knowledge, so not the imperfection of the Holy Quran. And to get more information <coughs> about the books and writings of the Promised Messiah, about all these subject matters, you can always visit our website, the Jamaat's official website, that's www.alislam.org. Gentlemen, coming back uh, to this same subject matter, another thing that's connected to this, um, Hafiz, if I could come back to you, is about the, 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 um, uh, the nature of God Almighty and the Word of God Almighty. There's a clash between these two, right? The Word of God, as in the Holy Quran and the revealed scriptures and science, right? People tend to think that they, they cannot work hand in hand. Please, how can you throw some light on that? Um, you see, the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam, wrote in his books that it, there are a lot of misgivings mm. by Muslims mm. saying that or trying to present the law of God, mm -hmm. the nature of God and the act of God or science mm -hmm. to 
act differently with one another. Right. The problem is, I said, whenever you see any disparity mm -hmm. between the two, right. it is either the import of the verse mm -hmm. is not understood, mm -hmm. or the law, what you call law of nature, right. is not actually law of law nature. Of nature. Right. For example, there's a verse in the Holy Quran. The Promised Messiah used that and said, Was Sama is at a Raja, while Ard is at a Sada. That Was Sama is at a Raja, the heavens that comes and comes, or the heavens that revolve. So it's against the present science. Mm -hmm. So Promised Messiah now told the Muslims, said, No, the meaning of that. You know, one of the meaning of Asama, mm -hmm. heavens is not a physical state, mm -hmm. it's a spiritual state. Mm -hmm. So, that place, Wasama, could not be interpreted as heavens. Mm -hmm. In Arabic, Wasama also at the same time stands for clouds mm -hmm. that brings rain. Mm -hmm. So, in the physical sense, the cloud that comes and comes to wet the ground, mm -hmm. to make greenery to come from the ground. Mm -hmm is a system in a physical way, mm -hmm. is a natural way. Mm -hmm. God expounded there. Mm -hmm. Then I said, when God, at the time of need of water, mm -hmm. to water the earth, the cloud comes, mm -hmm. so much so that greenery now comes on the earth, mm -hmm. habit comes, then in spiritual terms also, mm -hmm. God in his infinite knowledge will always, at all time, mm -hmm. recurrently, mm -hmm. send water from the clouds of heaven spiritually, mm -hmm. For those that need that are thirsty, to nurture so, them. To nurture them. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. And again, Baisa, one one thing I would um, like you to finish off this um, would be now the reasons why the the, the so-called ulama or the scholars of Islam used to easily get rid of these verses. This abrogation of these verses was that they would try to relate it to certain hadiths of the uh, you know so-called sayings of the, mm -hmm. of the the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that. Well, if we don't understand this verse, there's this hadith that gives us the proof that this verse is no more valid, right? And of course, we know that, like Hazrat Aisha, one of the wives of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you know, that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's understanding of the Holy Quran, you know, kana khuluqul Quran, that he lived by the Holy Quran. All of his actions were by the Holy Quran. So he couldn't have said anything that contradicts the Holy Quran. So what do you have to say about this, the hadith and the Holy Quran? The, to start as a proof. The, the promised Messiah Islam, Islam, have given us a very good principle. Right. Very interesting pr principle. First, I will tell you, the, every verse of the Quran is there to elevate the spiritual state of man. Mm. Never to bring man down. Okay. That's one thing we should keep in mind. Mm. Secondly, the promised Messiah Islam, Islam said that one should, the Quran is the hakim is the guardian mm. over the hadith the okay. and the sunnah. Yeah. It's the judge. Right. Right. Therefore, the greatest mistake why this concept came in mm -hmm. is because people normally take the hadith to interpret the Quran. Right. As if, God forbid, the Quran is a servant mm -hmm. to the hadith. Mm -hmm. When it should be other way around. Mm -hmm. So when people read certain things in the Quran, mm -hmm. in the hadith, they will say, oh, that means that some parts of the Quran are interpret. Uh, 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 there's a contradiction in them, mm -hmm. because, for example, oh, the Quran is imperfect right. because it is said so, by, by so and so forth. Mm, mm. But the promised message is that some say, no, this is not this is not possible. Right. It is the it is the hakim. Mm -hmm. It is the judge over the uh, over, over everything. Everything else, yes. That that's one of the beautiful explanations given by the promised message. And the the Muslims mm. they will say no. Even the companions of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, mm -hmm. or the Tabi Tabi'in, those who follow those companions, this is their interpretation, so we have to accept them. Mm -hmm. Even though they know that it is totally against, against the, Holy Quran. The, the Holy Quran. So in, in, in summary, what the Promised Messiah has said yeah. is that there's nothing else you know, that should stand as a judge over the Holy Quran, because this was revealed and safeguarded by God Almighty himself. So it should be a judge over everything else, because the Holy Prophet could not have said or could not have acted Otherwise, so that means if any hadith or any sunnah is contradicting the Holy Quran, we should know that the Holy Prophet could not have done that or he could not have said that. So the Quran always stands as um, the Good most um, safeguarded mm -hmm. and, and as a judge over everything else. Now, coming to the meanings of the Holy Quran, Prophet Sahib, um, some or most Muslims have this idea that 
There was the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, the companions, and then those who follow the companions. And they have a label of Mufassirin, that the commentators of the Holy Quran, the famous ones. They think after them, no one else can give any other new meaning to any verse of the Holy Quran. Right? God cannot reveal it to anyone. So what does the Prophet Messiah say about the unending meanings of the Holy Quran? The Prophet Messiah mm. mentioned that he gave a guiding principles. Yeah. You see, he said that the reason why the early scholars fall victim of such circumstance is because they have believed that after the Sahaba, after the Rusa Salam, after the few years after that, those that came after will not be able to give any interpretation to the Holy Quran again. But in the Holy Quran itself, Almighty Allah says, mm -hmm. That I have not come with any example mm -hmm. for you. Except that I come mm -hmm. with a better explanation. Mm -hmm. So, Prophet Muhammad said, when people fail to understand the import of a message, mm -hmm. then they are drifted to just say, this cannot happen again. Mm -hmm. So, he now gave series, about 16, or 15, 16 principles mm -hmm. of understanding and reflecting over the Holy Quran mm -hmm. before one can now be a good mufassir of the Holy Quran. A good commentator of, commentator the, Holy of the Holy Quran. Yes. Because, for example, some says that in the Holy Quran, mm -hmm. like Quran speaks and it contradicts an accepted mm -hmm. truth mm -hmm. of science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, no. Mm -hmm. Quran speaks of the minutest detail of everything. Right. For example, wa kullu fi falakin yasbahun. The Prophet Messiah said that and he said that and gave this what science has proved now. Mm -hmm. Look at the time of the Prophet Messiah, mm -hmm. Prophet it was never said by science that mm -hmm. things in orbit swims. Mm -hmm. But when Mufassirun want to say it, they believe everything in, her, in, in that space mm -hmm. was jammed. Okay. The stars were static. Mm -hmm. They were objects that were just there like that. Mm -hmm. No. Then Quran proves that and Prophet Messiah said, it swims. Mm -hmm. It's now, the science now said, everything there, Fala mm -hmm. is, Bahun, is in a swimming form. In its, swim in its own orbit. On its own That's orbit. a beautiful explanation because so, that was something that obviously, you know, without the knowledge of science, no one could have imagined what's beyond there. But mm -hmm. these are verities of the Holy Quran that were hidden at some point, mm -hmm. but at the time of the promised Messiah, you know, God Almighty revealed to him. So, Mbaisa, if I could come to you about um, the principles of commentary. Mm -hmm. that were set by the Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. He set down some principles to have deep understanding of the Holy Quran and to be a commentator of the Holy Quran. Can you give us some of those light, um, principles that the Prophet Muhammad gave? Yes, before I quickly give you those uh, pr principles, mm. uh, yani, pro the Prophet Muhammad mm. also mentioned with regard to the fact that whenever mm. uh, somebody brings to you a, a, a Quran or Hadith, you have to try to think and ponder over it mm. and try to see in every sense whether it makes sense. When it makes sense, it doesn't contradict with the Quran, mm. Makbul, you have to accept it. Right. But first of all, the Prophet Muhammad with regard to the principles of, mm. of the interpretation of the Quran, the Prophet Muhammad said, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you have to have that strong and undivided relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. Secondly also, you have to also keep in mind that the Quran is the judge of the Hadith or Sunnah. Mm -hmm. so you have to take that into consideration. Okay, so I think on having a, an undivided relationship with God Almighty, yeah. and then knowing that the Quran stands as a judge over everything else, yes? And also the promised Messiah Ali Salatu Islam said, you should also keep in mind that the verses of the Quran are connected, mm -hmm. and they, they, they are like a single body, they serve one another. Mm -hmm. And also the promised Messiah Ali Salatu Islam said, you also keep in mind mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the words of God mm -hmm and the ark of god mm -hmm. they are they never they, 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 they never contradict each other right, right. and also the promise of Salih, 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 also mentioned another principle mm -hmm. where he said mm -hmm. that uh, the, the the quran mm -hmm. the quran is 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 always answering mm -hmm. all the moral and spiritual needs of people mm -hmm. so therefore the concept that the quran is lacking certain things mm -hmm. It's not one should not put that in your mind and then read the Quran, mm -hmm. but rather you should put in your mind that the, mm -hmm. this Quran I'm reciting mm -hmm. is an answer to 
everything. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that Ali said Islam say also that's not like takrar in the Holy Quran, which is rep uh, so called so, repetition. Mm -hmm. But wherever it's assume it happens to you that you think that is, this is a repetition. Mm -hmm. You will see that it always gives a fine and a profound meaning, mm -hmm. okay, to, mm -hmm. uh, meaning to that in that place mm -hmm. than even before. Mm -hmm. So every time a, something that appears to be a kind of repetition is not only it's not a mere repetition, mm. but rather it gives a profound meaning, a new meaning mm. to, to the I think to that's, the a, that's a very big challenge that someone mm -hmm. can have. For example, mm -hmm. like you said in the beginning, if someone reads about the story of Moses in Surah Al-Baqarah in a certain chapter, you know, naturally when you come across another similar story of Moses, then the person may tend to just say, well, I've read this story already, now I'll just move on. And just, but then the Prophet has said that every single story should be tackled you know differently and know that you know there's an order there's a reason why it has come at every single let, place let, yes let, let me say something from surah to yusuf mm -hmm. you know in surah to yusuf, yeah. yusuf almighty allah mentioned that if just to talk and re relate mm -hmm. the history of as a yusuf alayhi salatu was mm -hmm. was salam and yaqub and his brothers people have related it just normally right but he says tilka ayatul kitab al mubin these are verses of this manifests book. Now he now said, Ahsan al Qasasi. Nahanu na kusu alayka Ahsan al Qasasi. We are relating to you. Ahsan now, it's not that it's ordinary. If you just want to listen to ordinary tales and read, you will listen to that. But this one has a specific reason. So I use the word Ahsan al Qasasi. Yes, you must have heard it in a version, mm -hmm. but we that are telling you, we want you to understand one thing here. Mm -hmm. So that's why the word, when the narration of events, mm -hmm. stories in the Quran, Quran stipulated there right. that it's not just a mere storytelling mm -hmm. book, right. rather it has a greater import. Right. So that's that's that, why that, 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 that indeed is a very it's a very you know beautiful principle that has been said there that everything you know it's not only specific to that even that person. Until time, till the end of time, that's a moral behind every story that the Holy Quran narrates. And we can always learn from those lessons. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, I know we have more points, and this subject matter cannot be finished in half an hour, but that's all time permits us. And thank you very much for um, coming here and um, um, sharing your wisdom about this subject matter. And to, get, to go more into detail about the teachings of the Promised Messiah, the services of the Promised Messiah, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Padian, alayhi salam. You can always visit our official website, that's www.alislam.org. And in the library section, you can find many books of the founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat and his khulafa and many scholars um, regarding this subject matter and many other of the services of the Prophet Messiah alayhi salatu was salam. Well, that's all we have for you from our MTA International Studios here in Qadian, India, about this subject matter of the Messiah of the Age and his services to the Holy Quran. From your host Abdullah Diba and from our team here in Qadian, we say to you Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.